Hello and welcome to a new video. So here we will talk about the infectious mononucleosis. This is a contagious infection causing lymphadenopathy as shown in this picture and it also causes lymphocytosis as shown in this plot film. And here we will explain it. So let's start. So let's start with an overview. So it is called infectious mononucleosis because infectious means the disease can spread to other people and mononucleosis because there is increase in mononuclear cells count which are also the reactive lymphocytes and it has other names like it is also called the glandular fever and the kissing disease glandular fever because it is associated with swollen lymph nodes as we mentioned earlier and fever because it is associated with high temperature and kissing disease because it is spread through saliva. It is primarily spread through saliva as we mentioned but can rarely be spread through semen or blood. Incubation period is about four weeks and infected people spread the disease during this period before the symptoms develop. Infectious mononucleosis not highly contagious, thus isolation of cases is not necessary. So now let's talk about the presentation of the mono. So same as with other infections, mono present with fever, which resolves after two weeks, and it also present with pharyngitis with tonsillar exotates. Like this example here, there is pharyngitis and there's exotates on the tonsils. So it also present with lymphadenopathy. It is non-tender, cervical, anterior and posterior, and sometimes inguinal and axillary lymphadenopathy is present. And here we have an example of the axillary lymphadenopathy, as you can see here and here. It also present with splenomegaly, palatal, petechia, and periorbital edema. And it is always present with fatigue. So death is rare in the mono, but it can occur due to respiratory obstruction from the swelling or from hemorrhage from sibling rupture, because remember with the mono there is sibling enlargement and it might lead to rupture or from thrombocytopenia leading to bleeding and from encephalitis when the disease spread to the brain. The highest risk of infection with the mono is in ages from 10 to 30 but uh, if, uh, if the person is infected from the children under 10 years the disease is mild but if in adults over 30 the disease is severe and prolonged. Causes of the mono include the Epstein Barr virus that's about 90% of the cases of mono are caused by that and the cytomegalovirus from 5 to 7 percent of cases are caused by that and there is also other viruses that cause the, the mono. The pathophysiology of the mono is that the virus replicates in the epithelial cells of the pharynx leading to pharyngitis and the virus infects the B cells through the CD21. Uh, that's when the virus enters the cells and the body responds to this by activating the cytotoxic T cells which attack the infected B cells resulting in enlarged atypical lymphocytes which also called the uh, mononuclear cells and also called the downy cells or the reactive lymphocytes. Diagnosis of the mono is through the medical history, the highest risk in ages 10 to 30 as we mentioned, close contact with other infected people, the patient usually in close contact and the fever and sore throat presentation. Physical examination by lymph node examination because remember with the mono there is lymph node enlargement looking for enlargement and abdominal examination looking for enlarged spleen. And the heterophile antibody test which is also known as the mononuclear spot test is positive in infectious mononucleosis cases. Now regarding the differential diagnosis in mono, there is the acute cytomegalovirus infection and the toxoplasmosis 
Those infections are the most common differentials in mono. They present with similar symptoms as the mono, but differentiated using the heterophile antibody test, which will be negative in both of them, and positive in the mono, as we mentioned. Now regarding treatment, so the disease is self-limiting, it heals by itself, and sometimes symptomatic treatment is needed, and avoidance of contact sports and weight training to decrease the risk of sibling rupture is necessary, because remember, with the mono, there is sibling enlargement and contact sports and weight training increase the risk of sibling capture. So you ask the patient to avoid them. And if pharyngeal edema is severe, short course of glucocorticoids is indicated. Almost all people given amoxicillin or ampicillin antibiotic eventually develop generalized itchy maculopapular rash because of the immune response triggered by the interaction of the antibiotic with the virus. So avoid giving the, your patient these antibiotics. The rash looks like that. Uh, it is maculopapular rash. It is itchy and uh, it is triggered by ampicillin or amoxicillin. So don't give these antibiotics to your patient. This is another picture of the rash. Uh, it's all over the hand here. And finally, with the complications of the mono, we have the sibling rupture. This is here an example of sibling rupture. There is subcapsular hematoma here and also here. And autoimmune hemolytic anemia. The disease, the disease might also transform to lymphoma and a lot of more of uh, complications, but are rare. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support us more, you can buy subscribing to the Patreon, link provided in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and peace.